The heaviness and urgency of the soon coming moment that will ignite the 70th week of Daniel in the middle of October in 2024 has resulted in a lot of questions from our subscribers. One of the questions is, which one of the eight videos I have produced so far with the 2024 moniker would be the most appropriate to pass along to a skeptic or unbeliever who is not prepared for the soon coming great and terrible day of the Lord? Hello, my name is C.J. Lubbock, and while others have prepared post-rapture tribulation kits for their unsaved loved ones and friends, and we certainly applaud and encourage that effort, we also see the need for a resource that will give comfort and guidance to those that will soon realize that the true church has disappeared and they have been left behind. The video you are about to watch and another video that is in the works have been prepared and produced in order that you have a Bible-based resource that you can give to those that will soon find themselves living in a period of time they could never have imagined. A period of time that the Scriptures has forecasted and described more than any other period of time in the entire Bible. We would encourage all Christians to purchase as many of these videos as they can and send them or pass them out in the short period of time remaining. I have priced these videos at $3 each when purchased in quantities of 6 The very small profit margin at this price is being reinvested in producing more videos and I nor Rock Island Books will financially profit from the sale of this video. We do pray that this investment will result in a spiritual awakening and the addition to the ranks of what the Bible calls the Tribulation Saints. This introduction is not included in the video that is being offered for sale on Rock Island Books titled 2024, Salvation in the Tribulation, Have You Been Left Behind? That begins right now. It seems that everyone has heard about the rapture, and let's be brutally honest with each other. You probably thought it was the nuttiest idea you ever heard. I mean, really, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is going to come in the clouds and summon those of us that have put their faith and hope in him? And not just the living, but he's going to resurrect all those that have died, believed in him for the past 1994 years? We, all, both the living and the dead, will rise to meet him in the twinkling of an eye. And during that twinkling, just before we're being taken up, the Lord Jesus promises to change us into glorified beings in order that we might enter the celestial realm where the Lord has promised that he has prepared a place for me and us in his heavenly Father's house. The Apostle Paul, who wrote most of the Gospel epistles, declared it this way in 1 Corinthians 15. Listen to what the Apostle has to say about the mystery of of the resurrection. Now I say this, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I am telling you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable must put on imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. I wanted you to have this video, and please don't throw it away, even though the things I am telling you about may not have happened yet. But just because it hasn't happened yet, doesn't mean it's not going to. What am I talking about? The answer is simple as I am about to take an event that will make national and international news and put the fear of God into any thinking person's head as I and millions of others are about to disappear from the face of the earth. So put this message in a safe place so you will know what to do when I am gone. So you will know what to do when I and millions more are gone. Now I know that the whole idea of the rapture sounds crazy. The only thing it really has going for it is the fact that based on the unchangeable word of God, it is true. The truthfulness of this mystery revelation is confirmed by the first one to ever reveal it. You might want to consider who that was. His name was Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, who declared it the night before he shed his blood on a cruel wooden cross in order to redeem all mankind. This story can be found in the Bible in the Gospel of John, chapter 14. And once this happens, if it is not already then you have entered into a unique period of time that is called the Great and Terrible Day of the Lord. 
The brief period will last for exactly 2520 days, so you might start marking the days off on your calendar. Once it begins, and I am about to tell you when that is, the Bible teaches that the resurrection of the dead and the snatching away of the living who are trusting in Him is going to happen at the end of the church age, and it is best known as the rapture. Yes, I understand that you probably thought that anyone that believed that something so incredible could actually happen probably doesn't have both oars in the water. But once it does happen, you will not just be perplexed, but more likely in a panic, as you have just learned that I and hundreds of millions of my true brothers and sisters in Christ, people all over the world, including some of your nutty, well-meaning Christian relatives or friends like me, are gone. We have disappeared. And the speculation about what has happened to us, well, talk about nutty. When you hear how they explain our disappearance, well, let's just say it becomes even crazier. You may be soon hearing fake news about alien abductions or Mother Earth expelling those that are not spiritually vibrating at the correct frequency in order that the rest of you can all experience the next big step, the big leap in the evolutionary process of mankind, or some other unbelievable hokey story. Don't believe it. You are being told not to panic. It's all under control and everything is going to be all right. That is a lie. So now let me tell you the unvarnished truth. No matter how crazy it may have sounded, the truth about all this was revealed by Yeshua, Jesus, who actually promised his disciples and all those that have put their faith in him that the day would come when we would be snatched away. So now is a good time to begin preparing you for what is about to happen. I'm going to make a list for you of all the things you need to know and do in order to escape an eternal hell. The very first thing you should do is find a Bible and keep it safe and close. Find a Bible and not one on the internet, the actual Bible that you can hold in your hand and turn actual pages. Once you have a Bible, you now have the guidebook that tells you how you can join me and millions of others in heaven. If I am still here, then it will probably still be relatively easy to find a Bible. But once I am gone, Bibles will be scarce and almost impossible to find. How do I know this? Well, the Bible itself says that during the time you have already or are just about to enter will be a time when there is a famine of God's Word. So your first assignment is to find a Bible and keep it hidden. If you have it, keep it close so you can read it without it being taken away from you. If the great snatching away, called the rapture, has not happened yet, how will you know you have entered the seven-year period that is called the Great Tribulation and the Great and Terrible Day of the Lord? Well, I have two clues for you. The first is the disappearance of all those Christians who were truly born again. If you're reading this letter or watching this video and I'm still here, then obviously it has not happened. Not happened yet. But once I'm gone and the rest of us are gone you will know that either it has begun or soon will. The second thing that will notify you that this time of trouble has begun is going to sound wonderful, but don't believe it for a second. Someone, probably someone that is already famous, or perhaps someone you've never heard of, is going to be all over the news. You can't miss it, because this person is going to be the one that brings peace to the Middle East. A peace treaty is going to bring to an end the war that is now happening between Israel and all those that want to destroy the Jews. The Bible says it is a false peace that will only last for 1260 days or three and a half years, and it's a sign that the tribulation has begun. The day the peace treaty is signed is the day you can mark on your calendar is the day that the 70th week of Daniel has officially started. You can mark it on your calendar and begin counting down the 70th week of Daniel, the time of Jacob's trouble and the great and terrible day of the Lord that is revealed in the Bible to be followed by the great and glorious day of the Lord. The 70th week of Daniel lasts seven years, 2,520 days to be exact. And what follows is called the great and glorious day of the Lord that lasts 1,000 years. This is the long-awaited Messianic Age, the time when Jesus comes to rule and reign on the earth for exactly 1,000 years. Now back to the rapture. Listen to the words of Jesus as he declared this mystery to his disciples on the very day he would be crucified as prophesied in Isaiah 53. You might want to read that. 
Read what Yeshua, Jesus, said just before he died to take away our sins. It's reported in John chapter 14, where Jesus comforts his disciples with these promises. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you, because I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you also will be. This event that Jesus promises is called Everything from the departure of the church, the snatching away, but most commonly it is known as the rapture of the church. Now it's not my job to scold you or bawl you out. I desperately want to help you. Except for God's grace, I would have been left behind. But the truth is that the rapture will happen very soon or already has happened and you have been left behind. And now you have heard about the Great Tribulation, and you are afraid about what is going to soon start happening on the earth, and you have good reason to be. So let me ask you a question. Do you truly want to be saved and have the gift of eternal life? The church age of grace is over, and now, if you are saved, you will be considered a tribulation saint, one saved out of the tribulation. There are no promises for you, none, that you will be protected and survive the tribulation. To the contrary, your physical fate is described as almost hopeless, leading finally to your death. Unless you're Jewish and are one of the 144,000 Jews who are sealed for protection, or you are living in Israel and flee to the wilderness, probably Petra in Jordan, right after the Antichrist sits in the newly built temple in Jerusalem and declares himself to be God as reported in Matthew 24, 15-22. If you are neither of these groups, then no physical promises have been made to give you any comfort, none. But what is left is your eternal existence. And how that ends is really all that matters, or all that ever has mattered for anyone living in any age on the earth. Please open your Bible. You will want to read it in earnest and pray about it, especially the book of Revelation. God wants you to know what is going to happen next, and since the Bible will soon be banned, like I mentioned before, and if you want to know about this, read it in Amos 8, verses 11 through 12, there will be a famine of the Word of God. So your salvation depends on what you do next. You will either fall into deception that's going to ensnare the entire world, or you're going to trust God and do what He commands you to do during this unique period of time when the entire world will experience His wrath. That's right, the wrath of God. There is no biblical plan to physically survive this seven-year period, as the Bible says that in the end, men will be as scarce as the gold of Ophir. Settle it in your heart that you will most likely be killed at some time during the seven-year tribulation. But there is something you can do that will make a difference in your life for eternity. In order to secure your eternal future, you need to repent and confess that Jesus is the Lord and receive his everlasting good news that the only way to heaven is by and through the one door, the one way, and that way is to put your faith and hopes for eternity on the once crucified but now risen Yeshua Jesus the Christ. Ask him to come into your heart and ask him to give you courage and comfort in your time of trouble. But don't expect the trouble to go away because it won't. Take comfort from what Jesus said to Peter as reported in Luke 22, 31 through 32. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Read the story of Stephen's death in Acts 7. Read Revelation 6, verses 9 through 11, where it says, And when he, Jesus the slain but now living Lamb of God, broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, wilt thou refrain from judging and avenging our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each of them a white robe, and they were told that they should rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who were to be killed, even as they had been, should be completed also. Read Matthew 16, verses 25, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. 
Take comfort in all the promises to the tribulation saints. Your sins can and will be forgiven if you have trusted in the righteousness of Jesus alone, and when that happens, you are given a white robe that represents Yeshua's righteousness and now covers you. You will very soon be in the presence of God in heaven before his throne with the angels. You are promised a crown of life and to be led by Jesus to living waters and a special blessing and to rule and reign with Jesus on the earth for 1,000 years. But this is all future and it depends on what you do next and next is nothing but hell on earth for seven years. Pray to God that you will be one of those that will be resurrected right after the seven-year great tribulation is over. And like I said earlier, there will be so many who die in the tribulation from the wars, plagues, and judgments of God that Isaiah 13.12 says, I will make mortal man scarcer than pure gold and mankind than the gold of Ophir. You need to grapple with the reality that absolutely nothing good is going to happen until you repent and seek the Lord with all your heart. Remember that the Lord looks at the heart, and it is your heart that needs to change, and I mean right now. Better to die a martyr with the testimony of Jesus on your lips and have eternal life than to die and be thrown into the lake of fire? The dying part is certain. Your destiny that will be revealed after you die is now in your hands. Listen to what it says in Revelation 14, verses 12 through 13. Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of God and their faith in Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. When does this now on occur? The answer is it begins, according to the Bible, after the middle of the tribulation. In other words, this promise to be blessed once you die is exactly after 1260 days. It begins on day 1261, the day after the middle of the seven-year tribulation. Yes, says the Spirit, to those that have died for the testimony of Jesus, that they may rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. So what are the requirements for salvation in the tribulation? You may be asking, isn't it just what I've always heard that is based on Christ alone and what he's done and you can add nothing to it or subtract anything from it? The answer is no, the church age is over. The church age has come to an end. And the Lord has some very specific requirements of do's and don'ts for those who wish to enter into his kingdom. There are things you must do and there are things you must not do. So let's look at some of those things that the Lord requires of you as a tribulation believer. Number one, or first, repent of your sins, Revelation 9, 20 through 21. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and silver and of brass and of stone and of wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk, and they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their immorality, nor of their thefts. Second, do not, I repeat, do not take the mark of the beast or worship his image. Now this mark will probably be something that changes your DNA. In fact, I'm certain of it. Something that also can be scanned, that is embedded under your skin, of your right hand or forehead, and it most likely will be introduced in a way that seems perfectly normal. You won't be able to buy or sell without this mark, which means you will not be able to buy food. Revelation 14, 9-10 says, And another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives a mark on his forehead or upon his hands, he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That doesn't sound like something you want to experience. You can read about the man known as the beast, or also known as the Antichrist, in Revelation chapters 11, 13, 14, 17, and 19, and in Daniel chapters 2, 7, 9, and 12. Now, if you're wondering why taking the mark of the beast is so unpardonable, the unpardonable sin, actually, during the tribulation, and so important an issue that the Lord sends a special angel with the single message that all that dwell on the earth do not take the mark of the beast. What is this all about? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. The mark of the beast is not just a tracking device, not just a visible sign. 
it is a concoction schemed up by Satan to actually introduce the serpent Satan's DNA into your body. In other words, once you take the mark, you are unsavable, because now you no longer bear the image of the God that created mankind, but have replaced it with the image of Satan, the serpent, who desires his new image bearers to worship him and him alone. In other words, taking the mark of the beast will introduce into your DNA a poisonous venom that changes you from the image bearer of God to the image bearer of Satan. If you take this mark out of the convenience thinking that how else can you survive, you have just forfeited heaven and any possibility of salvation or eternal life. This is one of the unique distinctives of the seven-year period that begins after the rapture, after the true church has left the world and the age of grace is over, finished, concluded. You must not deceive yourself as this test begins in exactly 1260 days from the start date of the tribulation that most likely, based on the Lord's 7,000 year prophetic sabbatical calendar as best I understand it, will launch the 70th week of Daniel on the day of atonement that most likely begins in the fall of this year, 2024 AD. Third, by not taking the mark of the beast, you must now settle it in your heart not to love your life unto death. Fourth, Based on a genuine heart change, you are told that you must maintain your testimony of Jesus. This is your active faith, confessing to all men that you know that Jesus is coming soon to set up his kingdom and rule and reign over all the earth, and that granting eternal life is the Lord's prerogative in his hands, and no one else can make this offer. Matthew 10, 32-33 Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men, I will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. Fifth, Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. One way to give God glory is never in your heart or with your tongue to speak evil of the two witnesses that he sent to Israel who are bringing plagues on the earth. Do not participate in the world's jubilation at their death. Listen to what the Bible says will happen on the earth when they are killed. This you must avoid. Revelation 11, verse 10. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, that's the death of the two witnesses, and make merry, and they will send gifts to one another, because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Sixth, do not speak evil of God for all the judgments he is pouring out on the earth. Revelation 16, 21. And huge hailstones, about 100 pounds each, came down from heaven upon men. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, because its plague was extremely severe. Seventh, this is critical. No one that hates Jews or harbors bitterness toward them in their hearts is going to be saved. Period. End of sentence. You must, if given the opportunity, help the Jews and do not go to war with Israel, both physically or in your heart. Matthew 25:31 through 46 says, All the nations will be gathered before Jesus, and he will separate the sheep from the goats. And in verse 40, And the king will answer and say to them, Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did this to one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. So if you make it all the way through the tribulation, which is highly doubtful, but for the sake of argument, let's say that you do, but you failed when given the opportunity to help the persecuted Jews, you will lose the opportunity and not be given eternal life. Harsh reality, but true, as you listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 25, 41. Then he will also say to those on his left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. So if you're in the military service, even if you had been drafted against your will or wishes, do not deploy to fight against Israel. When all the nations gather to war against Israel, you must not be present in the battle known in Revelation 16, verses 13 through 16, as Armageddon. 
If you want eternal life above all else, then decide now that it would be a million times better to be shot in front of a firing squad than to be deployed to fight Israel and be on the wrong side of this war and directly destroyed by God and counted as his enemy. This is an opportunity for you to love not your life unto death and to have a testimony for Jesus. Zechariah 14.12 says, Now this will be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who have gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they stand on their feet, and their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouth. Sounds like nuclear war. In Zechariah 12.9 it says, And I will set about to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. All the Jewish people should read Zechariah chapter 12, 13, and 14. Two-thirds of the Jews will be killed, and the last third will be brought through the fire and refined as silver is refined. And they will look on me, says the Lord, whom they have pierced. And they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son, and they will weep bitterly over him. The one whom they have pierced is Jesus when he was crucified. Again, read Isaiah 53. The Jews realized that Jesus, finally, was their Savior, their long-awaited Messiah, and they repented, and they received him into their hearts and have a personal relationship with God, and God saves them. So if you are a Jew, this is the only way you can live eternally and receive the promise of going into the kingdom promised you in the ancient scriptures, a time promised when you will be a light to the nations, so that the Lord's salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Listen to what it says in Malachi 3, 16-18. Then those that feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord gave attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and who esteem his name. And they will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I prepare my own possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. So you will again distinguish between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. The bottom line is that, like it or not, the chances of you making it through the tribulation alive are a thousand to one, not good odds. And if you do survive, only to immediately be judged by the Lord, who comes at the end of the tribulation to save his brethren that are repented and called upon his name, then what's the point? Remaining alive to die, to be cast into the lake of fire, to live an eternal death that makes the tribulation look like a Sunday school picnic? You have gained nothing by living if you have not obeyed the gracious plan of God that he has clearly declared in order that you join the innumerable tribulation saints in heaven. So a final encouragement to help you think long and hard about this as your destiny has been put in the balance in your hands in order that you might call upon the Lord to save you and give you courage to endure the hell on earth that has or soon will begin. Or will you ignore the warning? Believe the lies of the world and perish in the end without hope or any opportunity to change your eternal destiny. What will you do? Will you perish? Or will you be among the ones the Apostle John saw in a vision of the future that he was shown over 1900 years ago? Listen to what this says. By the way, a future that is about to become the present, the here and now. So in conclusion, please read the following promises that are only made to those that become, by their obedience to the word of the Lord, the tribulation saints. Reading from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 16. After these things I looked and beheld a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all the tribes, peoples, and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands. And they cried out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, and might belong to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders responded, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they, and where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God. And they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them. 
They will no longer hunger, nor thirst, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away the tears from their eyes. We look forward to seeing you in heaven, and many of us have been praying for your salvation and redemption, and that the Lord will give the grace and courage to make the final decision for Christ, without whom you can do nothing. He has loved you and proven it with the death much worse than anything you could ever anticipate, and all he asks is that you love the one with all your heart that has first loved you.